What up, family? Get on the support of Mary Dad. See the Mary Lee today is Freaky Friday in my city, Chicago, May 6, 2022. So they say this is the wrap up portion of my day. As you can see, I have my uh, Respect Smith and Weston shirt on, and it's two of them, which means it's always a troll trolling you, trying to um, implement you in some shit. That you ain't got nothing to do with. Now, back in the day, I used to be a card-carrying, pistol-packing diva. Real talk. And uh, as you can see, these roaches are starting to come out and shit. Nasty-ass motherfuckers. This is what I can't stand. It's a nigga upstairs by the name of Roach. That's his name, for real. Wasn't no roaches here uh, five years ago when I got here, May 31st of 2017. Now, I hate to go off course and shit, but I just want you to know that uh, a lot of motherfuckers is hating. In my trap building. 6210 South Kimbark Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60637. Bunch of fucking bum ass men, nasty. Ain't doing nothing but collecting money and shit, hoping I die so my legacy could uh, go to Eminem, Tupac, or whoever these motherfuckers is uh, trying to um, pass my shit off on. I believe more so than anybody, Tupac. Now, I did a, I mean, not Tupac, Eminem. Let's get this story right. Um, long story short, this is about Elvis Presley's. Uh, this is about Elvis Presley because, you know, people seem to be scared to do music pertaining to him. So I just got through writing a rap story called, you know, Burning Love or whatever. And I'll put it in the description of this here video. All right, causes and conditions. Let's get down to it for real. I'm the originator of rap music since the age of eight, 1975. I was in the Chicago Sun Times newspaper at the age of six in 1973. It is 11 11. Real talk in my city, Chicago. 11 11 p.m. Yeah, I come back for my number ones. You know, the originals always catch it the most. Because you got to remember the clones are always waiting to, you know, take your spot. I remember being with my ex-girlfriend, Luana Joy Jacobs, um, at the movie in my city, Chicago, watching Dream Girls. And this white lady was in front of me. You know how you sing along because it's a sing-along movie. And Jennifer Hudson, Beyonce played in, and Eddie Murphy, and um, Jamie Foxx. And they made reference, Jamie Foxx did, about how Elvis Presley stole Big Mama Thornton's song, Hound Dog, and blew up, just like Eminem, blew up for the face of rap. And I'm the originator. But you know, God dang on well, I wasn't trying to be no rapper. And if I wanted to... You understand what I'm saying? That would have been nothing. But I tried to save the world, which I did. Y'all fucked it up. But back to the movie. The white lady was in front of me and I was singing and she was like, can you be quiet? I said, no, I cannot. You understand what I'm saying? Because I knew the significance of her asking that question. Everybody sings along, motherfucker, to a fucking sing-along movie. Now, if I was just talking through the movie, that would have been one thing. But the fact that she knew who... I was, am, and gonna always be. And that's a savior for all my motherfucking dumbass niggas who didn't stand up and shit for real. Y'all gonna wish y'all had it, I swear to God. By the time I get through telling this truth. Now, when I was a little girl, my foster mother, Betty Jean Redman, and the Redmans, Leon Baker Redman, and Kimberly Redman, and uh, Edward Redman, who was in the Navy at the time, and um, I believe Leon Baker Redman was a so-called police officer or something like that. And 
Betty Jean Redman. I never knew what she was. She was my foster mother, though. Light skin, light, bright, damn near white. She had a visible mustache and stuff. And her mother looked, they looked like twins and stuff. And, you know, light, bright, damn near white. And from down south, they come north. To get people like me to come up off of and, you know, woo off the band. But I think she kind of took a liking to me and was trying to, you know, show me the ins and outs. But, you know, I don't know about her husband. But when the money came involved, motherfuckers probably started feeling some kind of way. Long story short, either way, I learned from all the bullshit, good shit, and rude boy shit. So, one summer... We went on a family vacation to Memphis, Tennessee. And we went to see Elvis Presley Mansion. And I was outside the gate just looking at it like, you know, in my mind, I think I was about 10 years old, something like that, 9 or 10. And in my mind, it, it hit me like a fucking brick. Like, that's my mansion, for real. I mean, I don't know what came over me. It was just, now, Elvis Presley allegedly had a cook by the name of Mary. And, you know, a lot of those guys on the road, they cheat on their wife or girlfriend or whatever. And then they have darkies. That's what they call us. You understand? Babies. And then they don't want to claim them or they try to get rid of them or, you know, pay them off to keep the secret. Dirty little secrets. That's all. You understand what I'm saying? Um, now, I don't know how true that could be, but I know Lisa Marie Presley, Elvis Presley's daughter was born February 1st 1968 and she and I right now are the same age I was born May 25th 1967 which means she just had a birthday in February and I'll be 55 this month May now a lot of stuff looked like it could have been my stuff in that house because they what the way they talk you understand what I'm saying? They feed each other, you know, words to say. And the simple fact that her and Michael Jackson ended up married and his uh, Neverland, you know, ranch came down. But Elvis Presley, you understand what I'm saying? Seeing where it's going, it's still making money. Let you know that uh, they hate to lose or be out shine or whatever and stuff. And that's why Oprah Winfrey show came down and the bar that's on carpenter called cookies bar on 79th and carpenter in my city chicago is still up because all they want to do is give y'all drinks and drugs and diseases and not a billion dollars like everybody could have gotten because we worked our ass off and i'm the biggest one out of all this you know that's going on but i've never had a new car a day at the spa or a, a real vacation so that lets you know they ain't give a fuck about y'all but me being the business lady tycoon that i am i figured that all of us in the world could have been a billionaire three four times you understand what i'm saying but instead of that they rather kill you off with the coronavirus drinking drug aids and nasty ass trap buildings and shit to remind you that you know, y'all ain't shit, ain't gonna never be shit. You understand what I'm saying? But they would have gave it to you. I promise you, I gotta put this in because it's the truth. Had y'all stood up, but y'all didn't stand up. And once they realized, y'all didn't give a fuck. You understand what I'm saying? They said, shit, we got time to make a comeback. So now they all the way up. And what y'all doing? Still marching, singing, how many times? Nigga, if I go, we all go. And now y'all got to fight because I'll be damned if I let these bitches hold me down. I went through hell in 2016. Real fucking talk. I got my ass whooped on camera February the 10th, 2012. The same day that Lisa Marie Presley was on some sh news show talking about her alleged father elvis presley you understand what i'm saying the same day nothing happens in this world by mistake but i just found out today and today being may 6 2022 and me being six years of age in 1973 because i was a child abuse victim and i'm still a victim because motherfuckers must want to be victims and shit i mean you work your ass off to try to save a motherfucker and what do they do they end up giving you cancer and they 
realize that, you know, your people ain't shit, ain't gonna never be shit. So what do all the other foreigners do? They come in, they take everything that we supposed to have, and they split it up, and niggas be looking like, damn, what happened? How many more times? I guess when we all fucking die, nigga. Shit, if I go, we all go. I'm the backbone of this shit. But I tell you one thing, I ain't going by myself. So, you know, for all you scary motherfuckers, I try to warn you about Eminem. You understand what I'm saying? My video that I did in 2013 on my mama's birthday, August the 9th, about Eminem. I told you, if you take the M off and it come backwards, it's enemy. And everybody knows you spell uh, Eminem with an M and not an E. But these are little tricks they play and shit. You understand what I'm saying? To discredit real motherfuckers. Now, Big Mama Thornton, you know, came out with Han, Hound Dog. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. And Elvis Presley upstaged her. I told you all that in my um, Eminem video. These motherfuckers be hating so much, they cut the comments off. So niggas won't be able to comment on the damn video. That's how much they hate. See, I believe in... Good competition. You understand what I'm saying? I don't mind allowing people to win. I let them go all the way. I could have, in 1995, when they knew who I was for real, for real, when I put my voice to three cassette tapes front and back, including to the Martin Luther King I Have a Dream speech and gave it to Oprah Winfrey, and I don't know if she got it or not, but, you know, she knows now I sent it. And uh, I put a set in the garbage can in Hyde Park, not too far from where I'm residing at right now. I'm residing right now, 6210 South Kimball Avenue, Chicago North, 60637, apartment 308. I say it every video that I do because I ain't scared of you motherfuckers and shit. Ain't nobody sending me no cards. Nobody sending no thank you letters, nothing. They just on some bullshit waiting on me to die. And I swear when I go, we all go. 5419 South Woodlawn Avenue, apartment 1A is where... I put my voice to three cassette tapes front and back, and I ain't know that Elijah Muhammad Mansion was down the street or Malcolm X Mansion. See, it's all one big story that I didn't know until I put it together like Tupac or these goddamn puzzle socks. Oh, well, I ain't got them on. I switched socks. Here they go. These puzzle socks right here because the shit was puzzling me. You understand what I'm saying? And I was trying to figure out how they did it. And then I realized, hmm, it must be a movie or something they trying to put together. Because they say you're worth more dead than you are alive. I said, bitch, I'm going to be there to see my goddamn movie directed and everything with you if I got you and shit. My dream car it, or truck is a, a drop-top Cadillac truck. Okay? Uh, they came up with that on YouTube. You understand? Since they stole that. I came up with a video, uh, straight talk only, and I mentioned it. So right there, let you know I patent my shit. Once you put it out there, woo out the bam, and I put it in my book, Rhymes, Poems, and Metaphors, plus one song. Everybody got the book except me. They don't want me to have even me. You understand what I'm saying? I got my license in a brand new, I believe it was, uh, I don't want to lie and say what year it was, but I think I was 18 years old, whatever year that Cadillac was. You understand what I'm saying? It was either um, 85, something like that, but it was a brand new Cadillac. One of them big long ones and stuff. You understand what I'm saying? And um, that's how they said that, you know, uh, Elvis was a Cadillac man. But if you listen to Immortal Technique song King, it's like you can see the Cadillac that turned pink go from a pink Cadillac to a, a Roy's Royce because they said um, Tupac, you know, knew First car was a, a Roy's Royce or whatever, a double R. The pitch me rolling a double R, whatever, you know. So they trying to pump him up. And if he's dead, dead man can't tell no tale, right? So y'all going towards him because he's what? More of a smoker, drinker, whatever and stuff. You know, shit that they want y'all to be. And I don't drink, drug, smoke, or fornicate. I have 25 years of sobriety. Christmas, and I say that. Proudly, motherfucker. I used to drink drugs, smoke, and fornicate and stuff. But because I had to tell these truths and, you understand what I'm saying, look relevant and not sound crazy. You understand? Real talk, even though I'm your ghetto news reporter and I came up with that also. And I came up with the spelling of Chicago, S-H-E-C-A-R-G-O, because everybody trying to shit on me and say it's raining, even 
Californians. And that's why uh, Elvis Presley came up with the song Burning Love. He said, I'm burning the whole L.A. Y'all need to get the fuck out of L.A. Because Tupac said to live and die in L.A. You understand what I'm saying? They call L.A. something else, too. It's not good. Believe me, it's on this uh, map of mine somewhere. What they call that motherfucker? They trying to rob a nigga, a blind nigga. I used to could see very well, but because time and situations have occurred with um, the police poisoning me in 2016, giving me cancer, my eyesight isn't as good, but yeah, they call, can they call California something. Y'all need to get the fuck out of California. Real fucking tell. Long story short, everybody know what time it is. But because, you know, I'm supposed to be a dumbass motherfucker and shit, they want to, you know, shit on me and say it's raining. I'm not selling for nothing, and I ain't dying for nothing, and you ain't going to come up off to me after a motherfucker kill me talking about, I didn't know who you was, because everywhere I go, trouble follows me, you know, motherfuckers be trying to start shit. Now, if I kill me a motherfucker in self-defense, do I get away with murder, nigga? Because that's all they trying to do to me. You know what I'm saying? I've been poisoned six times. I've been tased in my kidney. For a funky ass quarter. I've been um, uh, beat up by game bangers and shit. You understand what I'm saying? Like I see it. Uh, February the 10th of 2012. You understand what I'm saying? Nothing happens in this world by mistake. Doing Black History Month, wearing Black History colors, and representing black motherfuckers and shit. You understand? What I'm, saying? I'm a native of my land, America. Okay? Now, I don't know about. Elvis and his heritage and all that, but I know he wanted to be black and he was a fucking troll like Eminem, okay? And all of you motherfuckers just trolling ain't paying homage and shit. Believe me, y'all ain't seen my higher powers rap. We just getting started, nigga. I talk real cool for a reason because I know y'all niggas about to go to hell. And I'm going to make sure I give you the fucking golden ticket to that as well. Real talk. You don't give me shit. If I don't get a Mother's Day gift come Sunday... A card or nothing. I didn't give you my address. Believe me. Father's Day gonna be worse than you ever, ever could imagine this shit. Real fucking talk. I promise you I ain't lying. I'm not Tupac. I'm not my mama. And I'm not a scary motherfucker, okay? I do this proudly. You understand? I couldn't wait. You understand what I'm saying? I thought for sure y'all was gonna stand up. But Barack Obama from Hawaii without a fucking goddamn birth certificate finesse y'all niggas and shit. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody want to be president, nigga. But guess who they came to ask if he was going to make me while I was in fucking prison and shit. Allowing y'all niggas to see that for eight years, all he did was give y'all cell phones, gay rights, and coronavirus. And another thing, leave motherfucking goddamn Dave Chappelle alone. These niggas trying to figure out how you motherfuckers think and shit. If I couldn't goddamn get through to you all with my first ever YouTube video. Mary Mack versus the fat black Oprah Winfrey and that I was generally just referencing shit. You understand what I'm saying? But I mentioned, you know, me not caring one way about transgenders or metrosexuals or whoop whop the bam before even going hard body about what niggas did to me in my second video. I, I was so calm, cool, and collected. I don't know how y'all missed it. But I tell you what, I bet y'all asses is woke now. And before I live in a rat-infested, roach-infested, big bud infested building, because that's all they're trying to do, run me up out this bitch. And when they do, nigga, I'm here to tell you, somebody better scoop me up, because what they say, a poor man's trash, a rich man's trash is a poor man's what? Treasure. Real fucking tough. So somebody better scoop me up, because these motherfuckers just don't know what they got when it come to me. For real. Real fucking tough. And um, it wasn't all this fucked up when I first got here. These motherfuckers was kissing my ass and dying for real. And I have nursed them with the truth back to life. And all you motherfuckers that's giving my babies alcohol and putting it in the milk, trying to take their legacy away and shit. Young people, stand up. Stop drinking drugs and smoking and wasting your money on fucking diamonds and shit that ain't going to matter in the long run because if i die they're gonna kill you and take all that back you see whatever they do to me they're gonna do to you that's the honest guy's truth you know how i do though i break these balls and i flip that bible and whatever happened happened right but no one thing i worked my ass off for over 40 years to get it right i ain't stopping until them bitches drop dead
real fucking soft. Everything to the right. It is the four and the two. I was in the Chicago Sun-Times newspaper at the age of six in 1973. Today is what? May 6th, Freaky Friday in my city, Chicago. I never lose. Not with the numbers or the blues. They go to color purple and they go to two. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't got to teach you to beat you. And I pray to God, like Young Buck said, the news is watching. Real fucking tough. Shit on me and say it's raining, you bitch. All right, now. For the Bible. And I ain't gonna keep going back and forth with you motherfuckers. And you keep running up in my face. I will fucking goddamn defend myself by any means necessary. And that's the honest to God's truth. And when I die, everybody gonna die. That's my legacy. And my insurance policy. Real fucking tough. Here we go. I'm number one, bitch. Jeremiah. The book of the prophet Jeremiah. Chapter one. Two over here. Over here, 672. Over here, 673. I, I was in the Chicago Sun-Times newspaper at the age of six in 1973. You can't get no fucking goddamn gooder than that. You understand what I'm saying? Real fucking talk. I know you see it, bitch. I know you see it. It was a guy by the name of Jerry Ford that raped me. One of the five guys, game bangers. And Maya Angelou, or the, the singer Maya. A uh, ghetto superstar. That is what you are. Y'all need to be throwing your fucking goddamn motherfucker everything up. Because if you're waiting on me to die, I ain't got a problem with that. I'm just saying. They coming for you next. So, that's it. That's all, nigga. I want my respect. Otherwise, these guns right here, for real. Mm-hmm. If I had one, as much as I'm whooping your ass with this Bible... You niggas will be dead. That's how good I am. Y'all fucked up, not me. With that, this is Ghetto News Supporter, Mary Dash between the Mary and the Lee, Oprah Winfrey. Be careful of the company you keep. Because uh, Jailhouse Rock, Oprah in the corner, weeping all alone. Peace.